All right, as I mentioned, breaking news, the Jesse Smollett jury has returned a verdict guilty on all charges. We go back to Rob Schmidt in the Newsmax News Media headquarters studio. Hey guys, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's guilty on five out of six charges here, five out of six charges. Disorderly conduct were the charges. Each carries a maximum sentence of three years each, so you're looking at the potential of 15 years. Nobody really thinks he's actually going to get that. The, the, the actor here, Jesse Smollett, uh, he's, you know, he's a, a gay black actor, claimed that in 2019 and then one of the coldest nights in Chicago, he's out trying to get a sandwich and he gets attacked by two white MAGA guys and uh, says that, you know, this is MAGA country and they beat him up and they put a noose around his neck. Uh, I, the, the whole thing just seemed a bit ridiculous in the city of Chicago, quite frankly, from the get-go. But, of course, that didn't stop the media from going all in on this story, uh, as you would expect. The same media that uh, embraced this story and talked about it nonstop until it turned out to be a total fake. And then, of course, they don't have any interest in talking about it at all. But the justice system sees through everything. The justice system does not care uh, about what the agenda is or, or what kind of liberal mentality we're trying to push in this country, that there's systemic racism everywhere. They just don't care. You had six men and six women in a Chicago courthouse uh, that looked at all of this and said, this guy is a phony, he's a liar, and frankly, if you look at it, he's a humiliation to, uh, I think, this country at this point. He tried to stir up uh, effectively a race war to try and get himself uh, a bigger paycheck for uh, this show empire that he was on, and he wanted to get more clout and he wanted to get a bigger name. Uh, that's who Jesse Smollett is, and the jury found that tonight. Five out of six guilty. Uh, the worst thing about this trial, guys, is that it was not televised because this would have made for some of the mm -hmm. best daytime TV any of us had ever seen. The humiliating details of this, the extent to what this guy did to try to convince people that he is some kind of a victim in this country is just beyond the pale. It's so embarrassing. But again, five out of six guilty, possible 15 years. A lot of people think he might just get... Uh, some kind of probation and the humili humiliation of all this will be bad enough. Obviously, he's going to have a very hard time being a successful actor after this. Nobody's going to want to touch him. Uh, but that is uh, the latest news. And again, it wasn't it wasn't televised, so it just came out. We heard it uh, from producers that were in the courtroom, and, and there's uh, there there it is. All right, Rob Schmidt, thanks for the update. Appreciate sure. your time. All right, well, here with further reaction is Conscious Conservative Movement CEO Felicia Killings, along with Black Guns Matter founder Taj Ture. Welcome, both, Maj Ture. Thank you both for being here. Um, you know, breaking news this hour on this case. Want to get your initial reaction. Uh, Felicia, I'll start with you. What are your thoughts? Um, well, listen, you're not going to get a better response to this story beyond black culture. And I say that because um, once the story came out, it just ran through black culture. We saw Dave Chappelle, for example, taking shots at the entire story. It was a complete fabrication, obviously. Uh, nobody really bought it. But uh, again, black culture came through with, with a hilarious comedy. Uh, and that's pretty much how we see it right now. To take it in a serious matter, of course, I'm glad to see that, the, uh, that justice is served and that this kind of behavior won't be tolerated. We don't need additional fake race crimes happening right now, um, especially with the climate that we're in. So I'm, I'm pretty glad to see the verdict. Maj, you know, it's funny, when Rob Schmidt was breaking this down, he talked about this idea that Jesse Smollett wanted to be seen as a victim because he wanted more name ID, he wanted a bigger contract, he wanted more money, right? Um, I, I get it, and now he's got this verdict. He's going to be punished, suppose, you know, through the judicial system. But I look back and I think of, you know, you had all of these folks who were MAGA supporters, Trump supporters, who were unduly tarnished because he wanted to make money, because he wanted a bigger fame. And no one's out there saying, oh, you know what, you're right. That never actually happened. We apologize to them. Those people who got, you know, who, who were Trump supporters that were made to look like racist, there's no, there's no verdict for them. Yeah, I mean, even outside of that, the, there won't be a verdict really for just for Juicy Smollett. I mean, the reality is he's going to, like, you know, write a book about it. He's going to, like, go on hiding for a little bit. And unfortunately, the American public, especially on the left, their memories get real short. I mean, this isn't breaking news to everybody in the hoods across America. It's Chicago, bro. You're not outside getting a Subway sandwich at 1 o'clock in the morning. The waters is cold over there. The air is cold. We knew this, and this was why it was com a complete joke to us. I think that there's going to be justice uh, for the people that have the ability to kind of, like, come out of hiding a bit. I, I know there's a lot of people more right-leaning have been kind of, like, quiet a little bit, but 
the justice comes from, this is just the funny portion of the things that they said were accurate that found out to be not, that we already knew, you know, a year ago, two years ago. But this is just the beginning of things that, to show, we, how many of our friends have we told, you know, if you in the black community, like, yo, that dude that you voted for may not actually have your best interest at heart. And, and you know, those are more serious areas, but the vindication will come around, you know, voting time. That's when it actually matters. That's when the actual justice will come. Justice isn't just like, oh, Juicy Smollett made a mistake and he's going to lose his job or he's going to get made fun of. Justice will come when we can, re you know, of course, uh, correct and make sure that we go in a, a political direction that's actually going to be beneficial for the community. You know, Felicia, it's interesting because we have two narratives here. Black Lives Matter, before uh, the jury deliberated, they released a statement. They called the case a white supremacist charade. They went on to say that we can never believe police, especially the Chicago Police Department over Jesse Smollett, a black man who has been courageously present, visible and vocal in the struggle for black freedom. So here's the question here. We have the media, Don Lemon. We saw the, the messages from him and Jesse Smollett saying the police don't even believe you. We have part of the black community really degrading the police. We have another part of the black community saying we need the police. Uh, how does this sit with the black community right now when you have these two narratives going on? Well, let's just look at the data. Um, there was a Newsweek article which indicated that 81% of black Americans do not want to see less police force in their communities. And it's because they want to feel protected just like any other American citizen would want. So the, uh, the entire idea of black people wanting to defund the police, the data just is not there. And that's something that we need to pay attention to. Add to it BLM Inc., which I do separate from those who are on the ground trying to really do something powerful in their communities. These, uh, this organization, this socialist Marxist organization, they are not in favor of black men or black women. They're in favor of themselves and their own agenda. And so we see evidence of that. We even see evidence of some of the, the mothers and the families of these victims who were killed uh, in these streets. They have come out against and spoken against uh, Black Lives Matter, the organization. So when we see a tweet from BLM talking about they're supporting uh, this Smollett situation, it just adds to their lack of credibility within even our community. So uh, this is a huge joke, to be perfectly honest. And I think right now, like I said, Black Americans who are very much so conservative and who are looking for um, ways to improve their communities, they're showing uh, to the public, to, to the mainstream audiences, that they're not going to buy into the BLM narrative, which, thank God, nobody should. Hmm. Maj, Felicia, thank you very much. I appreciate you being able to respond so quickly during this period of breaking news. Thank you for having Thanks, me. Man. Nothing to you.